Hi, I'm about 11 hours from Sydney in Outback, Australia, complete with the red dirt. I might show you that up close. Anyway, I'm here at a little tiny uh, town called Wycliffe, which is an old opal mining uh, town. And we're going to take a look at something really interesting. It's the world's first solar power station. Now that's solar cell rubbish, actual solar thermal power station. Let's take a look at it. And here it is. We've got 14 5 meter diameter parabolic dishes with uh, covered with over 2,000 mirrors on each one. Each one's uh, individually tracking the sun. Not now, because it's not operational anymore. And it opened in 1981 and supplied up to 25 kilowatts to the town of Wycliffe, which was enough for uh, the hospital and the shop and uh, up to you know half a dozen homes or something like that. It's a very small town, <laughs> there's not much here. Um, but it was a really a big addition to the town. It operated uh, for over a decade until they actually grid connected uh, the town. But at that point, they actually uh, converted this. They added solar panels to it and that doubled the capacity from 25 kilowatts up to 50 kilowatts uh, maximum peak output. And this was developed uh, as a test installation by the Australian National University to test the viability of uh, concentrated solar thermal power generation. So they uh, designed and built all of these uh, 14 dishes here. Uh, you can see two arrays of uh, seven each, but they're all individually uh, tracking and they, were, they had their own autonomous uh, tracking of the sun. But the reason that they pick Wycliffe, not only is it a a small outback town but it also has one of the highest solar insulations in the world so and it, this produced up to 25 kilowatts peak for over a decade so if you have a close-up look at the dishes here you can see all the little individual collectors on there over 2,000 of these individual mirrors in a pal parabolic dish which uh, concentrates the solar into the uh, head unit at the top but this isn't the original unit there uh, it didn't actually have the guide post it was a center structure which concentrated into a spiral wound uh, heat concentrator that actually once the solar was focused in there so the solar concentrator on each one of these uh, got anywhere from 500 to a thousand degrees Celsius and that would actually uh, superheat uh, steam in the uh, pipes and then that would actually they had a steam uh, a specially built uh, superheated steam turbine generator that produced up to 25 kilowatts uh, peak and if you have a look at the facility here, unfortunately we can't get in there anymore. It is, uh, it is barbed wire fence. I could jump it, but you know. Um, we've got some storage tanks up here, which I uh, presume would have been uh, for the uh, water. And here at the back of the dishes, you can see that we've got this hut here, and this is what contained not only the uh, steam, the superheated steam turbine generator, but also the uh, batteries as well. They used uh, mining batteries because, well, batteries aren't like they are these days, so I guess mining batteries were the duck's guts back then. But uh, yeah, so they used those to uh, supply power to the town at night. And of course, during the day, it had uh, pretty much come from here and any excess uh, energy would have uh, gone in to charge the batteries as well. But yeah, unfortunately, um, it's not open. They were thinking about converting into some sort of, you know, tourist um, uh, type thing. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's uh, happened, although they've got some, you know, signage. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, it is a heritage. They do actually have a plaque and marker in there. This is actually a heritage site. So you're not allowed to uh, touch it anymore because, yeah, it's important. You can still see the mirrors are actually uh, in place there, which is really cool. So the concentrated uh, solar, that would have been up in, uh, this is the more modern stem for the, uh, like the solar cell version of this thing. And it looks like that one over there, you can see the mirrors have started to fall off that one over there, unfortunately, but it's still in pretty good condition, like 40 years later. So uh, this was a real, quite remarkable for its time, and it was the world's first concentrated solar but then of course uh, solar panels got better and there's just no contest these days with uh, solar cells of course of course if you wanted to generate the uh, steam for you know some other heating they might still be useful I guess but if we're talking about this thing in terms of efficiency how good was it well eh, not that great we're only talking about uh, 10 to 12 13 percent something like that efficiency um, at at best at peak. Remember I said this was only a 25 kilowatt maximum uh, peak output power on this thing. And we're talking 14 dishes of five 
meters diameter each. Uh, so compare that with like some people have on their homes, a 25 kilowatt home solar system. That'd be quite a large installation, but it's certainly not nearly as large as these 14 5 meter diameter dishes. So in terms of comparison to a modern solar cell array, eh, it just it doesn't cut it at all. In fact, these actually were converted to a uh, photovoltaic uh, high temperature solar cells and that's what you can uh, see here at the moment with that uh, three-legged strut there that that single-ended uh, steam pipe uh, solar absorber that was replaced with uh, these concentrated uh, solar and they contain 16 water-cooled uh, photovoltaic cells so I'm not sure how that worked inside the box I don't really have any info on that but these were converted over just to do research on high temperature um, uh, photovoltaic cells and it upped uh, the power output of this thing from 25 kilowatts up to 45 kilowatts so that wasn't too shabby but in comparison to modern solar cell arrays eh, it just it doesn't really cut it anymore but if you want to break this down in terms of losses where are all these losses occurring if we're only getting like 10 to 12 percent output total output system efficiency well if you consider a nominal uh, solar insulation of a thousand watts per square meter and that's the standard that all our uh, solar cells read any solar cell data sheet uh, and you'll find a thousand watts per square meter so we we'll use the same figure here so a thousand watts per square meter we've got a five meter diameter dish but let's say of that 1000 watts uh, per square meter the actual reflection loss of the mirrors that's going to account for about 14% uh, right there now modern uh, solar thermal plants uh, they've got better mirror designs these days they don't use a parabolic dish like this anymore they actually use uh, mirrors to go up to one central uh, tower now and here's a, a photo of modern plants and they can get into the megawatt uh, regions and the reflection efficiency of those uh, mirrors that can be up to 95% uh, uh, or so efficiency but these ones eh, yeah, they're only about 85% uh, percent with this uh, design back then. And then you've got uh, the absorber losses in that uh, piping absorber thing. That was about another 17%. And then you've got the all the ducting, because you've got to run all the ducting um, to all these things. It's quite a long way between the dishes and the storage tanks and the generators and everything else. Uh, there was another uh, 4% or so. And then you've got all the extra ducting and everything else. That was about another 3% loss. And then... Uh, uh, that only gave us about you know just over 62 percent that actually made it into the generator room itself and then the uh, generator the steam generator that was only about um, you know, up to 20 percent efficiency but that would that could be as low as 10 percent depending on the solar insulation that day the engine efficiency would actually change because the hotter it was the more efficient the hotter the steam got the more efficient that the engine could run so you know on a really you know a thousand watts or 1100 uh, watts per square meter day you'd you know really be getting up to you know just over peaking above 20 percent efficiency on your engine so 20 percent of that 62 and a half percent bingo you only get your you know 10 to 12 percent uh, total system efficiency out of this thing then you've got a couple of extra losses in there you've got the enthalpy of the feed water system that was like a couple of uh, percent and then you've got the pumping power of course to pump the water around but that was only low that was only you know a 0.2 percent or so but there's a couple of other uh, little losses in there as well but yeah this overall system efficiency of you know around about to that 10 to 12 percent figure and which would get lower it'd get as low as like uh, four or five percent on like a really really low solar insulation day eh, it doesn't really cut it but hey you know it generated useful power for this town for like a decade so isn't that cool the world's first solar power plant hope you found that interesting if you like me doing these uh, sorts of tours please give it a big uh, thumbs up and I can do more of these things but uh, yeah it's a shame we can't get into this one but anyway it's rather interesting that this thing is still here and this was uh, did important research back in the day to see if solar thermal was viable this one lasted for a little over a decade and then uh, they went yeah let's uh solar let's do uh, concentrated solar cell technology and then yeah that lasted uh for another decade or so before they decommissioned this thing anyway i hope you found that interesting as always you can comment down below catch you next time and remember, don't forget to subscribe to the EV blog. And you know you're in our back Australia when you find the red dirt. Look at that. Yeah, there's the bottom of my boot. <laughs>
and the White Cliffs has a sporting club, ironically, with solar panels to power it. And uh, yeah, well, this is the uh, cricket pitch here. This is the sporting oval. And well, yeah, I've seen better, but I don't know. It's good enough for Australia. And there's the dishes right in the background there. Fantastic, huh? Ah, Australian Outback. And ironically, the only pub in town has a decent solar array. Look at that. What a Bobby Dazzler.